Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Some of you will probably recognize the name of Father Michael Scanlon, passed away just a couple months ago. Not only a graduate of Harvard Law School and doctorate in theology, but uh, for more than 30 years, served as the president and eventually the chancellor of Franciscan University, took a school that was on the uh, brink of closing into transforming it, especially through prayer, into one of the strongest Catholic universities in the United States. And uh, towards the latter part of his life, he spent a lot of time doing retreat work. I had the privilege to be on retreat with him a number of times. And I remember on one of the retreats that I was at, he shared the following story. He uh, talked about a parish mission that he had just completed just like we have a, in, in Lent, you know, you have someone come for a few days or a week to lead a parish mission retreat. He said uh, it was the last day of this particular parish mission retreat, and uh, this gentleman came up to him at the end after it was all over and, and told him, he said, you know, I've been very impressed with everything that you have had to say all week. And he said, um, you know, I, at a very young age, conquered the business world, so I was very successful and uh, actually retired very young and uh, owned homes all over the world and traveled the world. And After I conquered the, the business world and, and retired, I, I decided since I was so young I, I always wanted to golf and I wanted to co conquer golf. So. As he told Father Mike, I, I hired a, a golf pro who worked with me every day. And I conquered that game. And I'm a pro golfer. So, but listening to you, I really realized that I need to conquer the spiritual world next. Will you assist me in doing that? And Father Michael agreed, and he said, uh, the first thing that I want you to do is go home for one month and pray over the words from the scripture, without me you can do nothing. The man um, thought it was a rather simple task. He went home and did that and came back a month later to see Father Mike and said, well, I did that. What do you want me to do now? And Father Mike looked at him and said, for one month, I want you to go home and pray over the words from the scripture. Without me, you can do nothing. And the man kind of left rather depressed and upset because he felt that he failed in his first assignment since it was given to him again. And so uh, he took it very seriously, and for a month he, he started going to adoration at times for several hours, praying over those words, and started going to daily Mass, praying over those words, spent a lot of time reflecting, praying on those words, and a month later he, he went for his next appointment with Father Mike, and, and he told him, he said, you know, when Jesus said, without me you can do nothing, he really means nothing, doesn't he? And the man went on to explain what he learned, and Father Mike, as he told the story, said, well, now that you have learned the meaning of humility, 
we can begin to work on your spiritual life. What is it that we set out to conquer in our own lives? What is it that we strive to do in our lives? It's an important question to ask. And if you really uh, think about that story, I just told you a true story, that I just told you a, along with all of the readings, there's, there's one word that is summary for the whole weekend, and that's the word humility. What do we hear from Zephaniah this morning? Seek the Lord, all you humble of the earth. Humility. Seek justice. Seek humility. And for the faithful remnant of Israel, those who survived, those who remain faithful to the Lord, who were among the faithful remnant, not the powerful, not the wealthy, not the prestigious. Zephaniah says the remnant will be a people who are humble and low. They were the ones who were the remnant of God. If you take Paul's letter to the Corinthians, you know, and Paul probably had to be one heck of a speaker because his message was not too easy. Talk about trying to win and influence friends. What did he say? Not many of you are very wise. There's a great opening line. Not many of you are very wise as humans determine wisdom. None of you are powerful. None of you have had a noble birth. There's a great way to win some friends. And what does he go on to say? Who is it that God has chosen? God chose the foolish of the world, and ultimately the foolish of the world are the ones who shame the wise. God chose the lowly and the despised of the world to be the ones exalted. If you think in our own lifetime, my lived life, two great saints of my time, Mother Teresa of Calcutta and Pope John Paul II. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, a pipsqueak of a nun who was dragging dead bodies off the streets of Calcutta. Very humble, very low. John Paul II lived in communist, prior to that, Nazi Poland. Was an orphan by the time he was 18. Very low. And yet these two voices in our lifetime became the strongest of the world. God chose those who cannot count for anything in this world, as Paul says, in order to reduce those who think they are something to nothing. Very strong words in the second reading today, words that we really need to reflect on, that call of humility. And then what is the gospel? The gospel is the Beatitudes, and we, we know those so very well, the Beatitudes. And well, really, what are the Beatitudes? The Beatitudes are the foundation of Jesus' teaching. Just as Moses went up on the mountain and got the Ten Commandments, so too Jesus, the new Moses, goes to the top of the mountain and he teaches the Beatitudes. And these Beatitudes must become the foundation of life for a spiritual life. And in one word summary, what are they? It's the call of humility. Beatitudes is the call of humility in different facets. And what is that humility? Well, the poverty of spirit. To always realize that you can do nothing without God. To realize that God is responsible for all things. That poverty of spirit is humility. Mourning the sins of the world and our own personal sins. Those areas we've fallen short, that's humility. To be meek, that's humility. To hunger and thirst for righteousness, that's humility. To be merciful, that's humility. To be pure in heart, that's humility. To strive to be peaceful, that's humility. To be willing to be persecuted for the gospel and insulted when you bring the word of the gospel of Christ into the world today. Humility. That is what we're called to strive for. You know, this past week we celebrated the feast of St. Francis de Sales. And uh, St. Francis de Sales, one of those classic saints, wrote a, a book called The Devout Life. It's one of the spiritual classics. And very rarely do I read to you, but I want to read to you 
excerpts from chapter 3, which is called Exterior Humility. And I'll read it to you because we all know if I try to explain it to you, it'll take me four times as long. Uh, so, words of the great Francis de Sales. <clears throat> Humility drives Satan far from us and preserves the gifts and graces of the Holy Spirit. For this reason, the saints, in imitation of Christ and his blessed mother, cherished this virtue of humility above all others. It goes on. Noble birth and popular esteem are not in us by nature. They come from ancestry or from the opinion of others. Some are proud, and I have to remember, he, he lived a long time ago when you read this. Some are proud because they ride a good horse, wear a feather in their hat, or dress in fine style. But what folly! Any glory for these things belongs surely to the horse, the bird, or the tailor. Others pride themselves in a stylus mustache, a well-trimmed beard, wavy hair, wavy hair, white hands, or for being graceful, dancers, singers, and so on. But it is contemptible that anyone should seek esteem for such very trivial things. Some look for respect and honor because of their knowledge of science and expect persons to come to them for enlightenment. They are mere pendants. Others show off their personal beauty and imagine everyone to be admiring them. All this is vain, foolish, impertinent, and indicative of a childish, frivolous mind. When a man's good qualities and virtues are nourished on pride or vanity, they are mere empty show and without substance. Beauty loses its charm when it becomes self-conscious, just as learning becomes mere pedantry when one is puffed up with it. Those who insist on their rank, title, or precedence lay themselves open to criticism and contempt. Honor is valuable when spontaneous, but worthless when sought or demanded. A determined effort to acquire virtue is the first step towards success. A similar effort to gain honor leads to contempt and shame. The chapter goes on. So we look at the readings this week and that very basic foundation of humility. We simply question ourselves, what is it that we really strive for? Humility or something on the physical sense?